Hi guys, this is Dr. Mohammed Usman and today this data visualization lecture is about chart junk and in this lecture we will be reviewing different chart junk types and what they may uh, reveal and how we can remove that chart junk from our visualization. So first of all we will be talking about first example of chart junk. What do you think that what it is like? It is like a black and black and white lines and it is, it is just uh, any kind of lines which have no width or data so basically this kind of visualization is called chart junk and if you use the same chart junk in our visualization they will look like this one so basically if you have this kind of visualization what do you think these visualizations are good or bad but actually we had used this visualization in the past and we had used the chart junk technique to display and generate our patterns when our visualization were black and white so basically chart junk was used uh, much of the time when we don't have coloring techniques and we have just black and white presentations at that time it was just feasible and uh, we had to use it but now if we talk about uh, different illusions or 3d uh, charts or anything like that into uh, 3d or chart junk or into black and white you can see that the chart junk looks like absolute the chart junk is not revealing so any kind of patterns which are uh, again and again repeatability which have many different kind of things and which, uh, which cannot represent our visualization clearly is a part of chart junk so if i talk talk about different chart junk we can see over here there were different kinds of chart junk before we had colors so basically you have all these kind of lines and if you use these kind of lines then they represent a very different pattern and very different kind of visualization so that was the very first reason to avoid the chart junk because they change your visualization drastic so we have another uh, image over here so what do you think about it it comes in chart junk or not but if i will talk about the chart junk principle i will tell you that this is a train schedule and it is about different trains moving from one location to another and it is just showing you a different number of lines and it will be not easy for you to understand but if you see uh, in perspective of a chart junk what you should be removing so i will say that i will remove the background lines because these were not clear to me so if I remove the background line, it has some kind of clarity. So chart junk principles tells you to have clarity in your visualization so every person can understand it easily. And sometimes chart junk is very useful and sometimes the chart junk is not useful. So basically you can apply and use the chart junk principle both in positive and negative sense. So another example I have of global warming. What do you think? What chart junk in this one can be removed? You can just place the answer in the comments and i will happy to see it and you can also tell me in my live classroom session that will be also useful so up to next we will be talking about visualization design principles previously we have talked about char, uh, char junk and the design principles of uh, uh, data integrity and now we are talking about visualization design principles both are different so we all we have also discussed about the life factor in visualization it doesn't come in the visualization design principle so you should be clear that which is part of visualization design and which is not so first of all the visualization first prin design principle is maximize data ink ratio it will be talking about uh, the uh, visualizations which are in 3d and which are using more graphics and more uh, space so basically when we talk about the data ink ratio principle it will tell us that we have to reduce the ink in our visualization and we can do it by eliminating the 3d so what if we use it in uh, the data ink ratio principle it will become like this one so if you can see that it uh, the multiple ink on two dimensional was more than in this one so automatically you are using less ink and you will be using more space so when you have uh, the maximized data ink ratio principle you make sure that you remove the redundant data rem uh, remove the redundant uh, elements from your visualization so first of all the maximized data ink ratio tells you to avoid the 3d uh, principle and 3d visualizations in your graphics and i will have another example if you see that this is a good ratio and we have all the dots uh, given and all the dots have their name and they are properly assembled and display over here but if we talk about the maximized data ink ratio what you will be doing let's think for a minute so what you will be doing for removing it and maximizing data ink ratio i hope so you have got the right answer the better representation is that you remove the names because names are taking the more ink for your data visualization and your object so basically when you will do it you will have a data uh, points and they will be can be easily seen by uh, drawing a center line and we can also know that which are close to each other so we can just use it uh, like a normal scatter plot so data ink ratio principle tells you to maximize your uh, data uh, ink ratio 
and by doing we can do it by re uh, removing the redundant labels and removing the redundant, redundant data in our visualization so basically you will focus on removing all kind of redundant data from your visualizations so second principle in the de visualization design uh, is the tufty uh, uh, arising principle basically it will just uh, tell you about the some ink needs to be used for lab labeling and explanation but most of the ink should not be used in your visualization it is based on the concept that uh, if you have a very if you have a visualization how you can remove the redundant uh, ink from that visualization and you can then maximize greater ink so basically what it tells you that first of all you will remove the left line then you will remove the left, uh, right line length then you will remove the shaded area then you will work on the top line position then you will work on the position of the number and then value of the number so it will uh, tell you to work six times up to on your chart if the, it is available or uh, up to that level so i have an example over here in the next uh, uh, diagram if you can see we have two bar charts uh, and these are different so uh, according to a uh, razor principle they are taking much space but according to normal principle if we see that according to visualization principle it is clear to us it has a clarity and we can easily understand what it is telling but it is taking too much space so we have to use the erasing principle for uh, this purpose at this time so what we will be doing we will remove the uh, first of all the left length and we will work on it and like uh, if you see on the right side it has just made it smaller and if you will work on the right line you you can see that it has combined the little bar chart into the greater bar chart so you it will become like this line it will become like this line over here so similarly like it has done with all the bar graphs uh, and if you see it has removed the top line it has uh, removed the other labels and it has reduced the ink on the labels so basically it has just removing all the redundant type of things so if we talk about the visualization principle normal one it is clear to us but we'll talk about the erasing principle we have to work on this all shaded area region and we have to make sure that we remove use less ink and display all that data so basically we can convert any visualization into normal uh, less data erasing using the uh, tufty erasing principle but it is not necessary that all the time we use uh, the erasing principle sometimes redundancy is useful like in this one the train principle uh, when we applied it on the maximized data ink ratio we removed the background of that visualization but according to uh, the author when uh, sometimes the redundancy is useful like we can know that which trains are coming like which trains are going on to which station and we have a clarity on the background and that it will provide us uh, the reader to see the continuum or the continuity from late night to the morning so sometime redundancy is useful and sometime it is bad so for redundancy i have some kind of examples over here that you will see that what kind of thing the thing is illogical and logical so what do you think and you can just comment back that what is logical and illogical i hope so you are getting the right answer what is what is this one and uh, and this is another second example you can also tell me which one is good or bad similarly similarly like in this one i have given a hint over uh, here and you can already see that hint it is that we have to work with colors with care basically we have to work on colors and we have to use colors with care and like if you see in the right diagram there is a background and that uh, that is embedded with the colors so basically if we have colors in our visualization we have to work on that if you use too many colors then the reader will be con uh, confused by those colors and it can also lead to the color blindness in our visualization so basically we have to use colors and we have to work that which choice of color is bad and which choice of color is good we will work on this color in greater detail when we'll go on to the color chapter in our data visualization so this was uh, up to here and you do not use the 3d we have learned from this lecture you will not use 3d graphs or 3d charts in your visualization so for further reading you can review the stefan few books and these are very good for you and it is uh, already available on the internet easily so if you like this video go on my youtube channel like and subscribe to it and you can also comment and send me any uh, topic which uh, you need to be taught in urdu or english and you can also get any certificate uh, of training for it if you are taking this in form of my uh, classroom session then you can register with me in my classroom session and uh, at the end you will give some exam as your normal exam and you will get a training certificate in data visualization and you will also get an experience certificate thank you